Hello, my friends. Welcome to the metal shop. Home improvement edition. Not in the garage today. Today, we're doing a little weekend <clears throat> home improvement project. See some lumber delivery there. We'll get into that in a second. So, when we built this house, it came with this little, it's a, essentially it's a 10 by 10. They called it a grilling porch. It's really nothing, it's a deck, but it's pretty small. We've used it for nothing except for housing the gas grill, really. No one ever sat on there or did anything. You can see that I've stained it in an attempt to keep it <laughs> from rotting. And as evidenced, it uh, staved it off possibly a little bit, but uh, not anywhere near as long as I wanted. Now, I can't complain. I did get 15 plus years out of this decking. Um, and the, the, <laughs> the ironic part is when we built the house, you know, you get at the end, anybody that's done this and the builders like upgrade this, upgrade that. And he said, you know, the house comes with this grilling porch. You can upgrade to Trex decking for $600. And I was, you know, stretched pretty thin at that point. I'm like, no, nope, put the regular decking on. Again, got 15 years out of it. Anyway, that is Trex that we're going to use. And yeah, a couple of joists got rotted there as well. But you can see, look here, this ledger board, nice and tough. The 4x4 upright here, nice and tough. <clears throat> I pulled the handrail off and underneath it, Look at that wood, nice rock solid. And most of the joists are solid, 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 solid. That one is rotten, that one's rotten. It's kind of the rotten apple thing where the decking rotted and being in contact with those couple of joists, it rotted those. Just a small portion of them, but I have to replace them. So anyway, we're gonna be tearing out and the steps. I've put this off for too long here. It's been, honestly, it's embarrassing. Couple of years, it's really it's really needed to be replaced. But the flat surfaces, the flat decking, the flat handrails are just trashed. So, and I got new, new stair stringers. Those aren't bad. You can see they kind of cracked, but look at the wood there. Again, that's not rotted, but that's a big chunk missing from it. Got the uh, shop vac, try and vacuum up. Hopefully most, most of the boards will come off in full big, pieces of actual wood, not, you know, the tiny little shards of dry and rotten that's super hard to clean up. But nice uh, weekend project. Thankfully, I have a three-day weekend. Hopefully, it does not take that long um, to get this done. Thankfully, also, they use nails on the decking, so that'll be a lot easier to pull up versus the screws that they used here on the handrails. Got some weapons of destruction there. Kind of, unfortunately, it's a little bit... Uh, it's overcast, pretty muggy out today. Um, hopefully I make it without rain. All right, follow along, cool. All right, so here's what we got done in an hour. Not a lot. The key was using the skill saw and cutting the boards into thirds. So you're trying to pull up small chunks. I can hear the radio there in the background. Hopefully music won't start playing. Then we'll get a copyright violation. Anyway, yes, cutting the boards into thirds was the key. And when pulling nails, if you remember, like your dad taught you, or my dad taught me, you'd like, it's good to have a block here to pull a nail. So I've kept this relatively nice piece of uh, decking here to use for pulling the nails. I have had to attack some with vice grips, some have broken in half, but I am getting out all the nails. You see most of the joists are pretty mint. I got a couple that are just completely trashed and they're gonna have to be replaced. But for the most part, we are doing pretty well. Keeping things pretty neat and tidy here. Gonna clean up and get after it some more. Awesome. All right, my friends. So it's a day later. Yesterday, I got all of the demolition done, all the old decking removed, and I got the joists swapped out that I needed to. Really, only three needed to be replaced. There were a couple, just a tiny little bit sketchy on the nail holes. So what I did, 
I flipped them over and I doubled them up there. If you can see the double there in the center. So it worked out perfectly, not as I planned it, but you know, I'm gonna pretend that I planned it that way. So today we're fastening all of the Trex decking. Now the first piece there was the hardest because it had to be notched for each one of those four by fours, which I did with a body saw, like a little mini, uh, you know, a little mini uh, top, no, what's the word I'm searching for? Can't think of it, I'll think of it in a minute. Um, anyway, that was the hardest piece. Every other piece I gotta chop this, see it's 119 and a half inches, so I gotta chop like, the, the pieces are a little long, the 20 foot pieces of Trex I gotta, they run a little bit long. So you're chopping off just a little bit off of each one, but this should go really fast from here. And if you look closely, this is kind of cool. You see the lid for the screws. Now the screws are painted to match, which is awesome. And if you keep driving them in, they'll make a divot so you can put a plug in. I don't really care about a plug. I kind of like the row of screws for this small little deck. But this gives you your screw holes and it gives you the space, spacing that you need between the decking. And that's important. I think part of the reason the last deck failed was they were butted right up against each other and you expect that they're going to dry over time and and shrink but it really didn't and this thing held water I ended up actually drilling holes in between the boards so it would drain in the back corner so this should go very quickly from here on out see the notch notches came out okay thankfully they're they're hidden so yeah and it's uh let's see you hear me sniffling because it's so warm today. It's probably 15 degrees hotter. It's sunny, you can see the sun, and it's super duper humid. So I'm losing <laughs> half my body weight and sweat is pouring out of me. So, all right, let's let's uh, let's get this thing going. Cool. Woo, don't fall. All right, so here's the carnage. One 20 foot piece left over, but I planned for that. I bought one extra. Three 16 footers, they still gotta do the steps and the railings, the handrails. So here's my setup. There's a Ryobi chop saw that I borrowed from a friend of mine, a girl, <laughs> a woman. She's got a chop saw, I don't. She's pretty handy. Um, what I was searching for earlier, here's my setup for the saw horses because this stuff, especially when it gets hot and today was effing brutal, this stuff is super heavy, but it gets like spaghetti. Anyway, the word I was searching for earlier was chop saw. And that's uh, that's like a body saw, but not chop saw. Ugh, sawzall. Sawzall, a reciprocating saw. I think Sawzall is a brand of reciprocating saw. That's a little mini reciprocating saw, body saw that I use to cut those notches. So anyway, there's the grill. That's the entire reason <laughs> that this little deck, this grilling porch is in existence. So project four. Probably tomorrow, there's these rickety, nasty old steps and I've got new stringers. And this stuff is in good shape. The four by fours and the balusters and everything's in pretty good shape. Just the, just the flat surfaces. Funny where the grill, I keep the grill kind of right in this area. The, uh, the decking underneath that was mint. So there's the treks. Worked out pretty good. Took me a long time working by myself, cutting the boards, lugging them over, screwing them down, and that's 18 <laughs> screws per board. So, and then the giant pain was that tiny little fillet strip there, which was basically about an inch and a half. So, smaller than this is the fillet strip that they had. So, you can see that's got to be two and a half, three inches, but they didn't have nearly the gaps. That I had and you have to have the gaps they let your water go through they expand and contract and probably you know had they done that this deck probably would not have rotted out anyway so got to drill a hole for an extension cord I run through there I'll put a hole saw in one of the joints probably somewhere right in that area there somewhere so We'll wrap up tomorrow, I hope, with the steps. Cool.
Right, so day three. You can hear the air conditioner running in the background. It is hot. I waited till late in the afternoon. I should have some shade here coming right along. And I know it's hotter in the afternoon, but honestly, the shade is going to be everything in this project. So what I've done is I've taken off the railings and I've done it by backing out the screws, which is really nice. Provides you with a nice template here that I'm gonna cut the treks to. So the tip that I thought of is, so most of the screws backed out fine. What I found was some of them were stripped and they were already stripped. So when you are, when you're building your deck and you get this, that noise, you guys know what I'm talking about. Do yourself a favor. When I put this decking down, every screw that I drilled, if I got that where the, the bit slipped and stripped out the head, that's the time to fix it. Back it out, put in a fresh bolt, put in a fresh screw, because you never know when you're gonna be the one that's taking it apart, redoing it, you know? So do yourself, do the next guy a favor. When it strips out like that, back it out right then, put in a nice fresh screw. So anyway, I'm gonna tear all this apart, cut the tracks to fit these pieces for the nice handrails and for the steps and try not to melt while I'm doing it. All right, cool. Well, happy 4th of July. Got the steps torn off. Nice, quick little easy project. Just gonna bang them together. Got all the treads all pre-cut there. Got my stair stringers. Go to assemble. And you can see the pre-cut stair stringers are not the same. So what that means is this guy, when they built the deck, the uh, construction worker there, the carpenter, whatever you want to call him, he cut his own. They're steeper. The treads aren't as long. Yeah. So not the end of the world. I used to work in a lumber yard when I was a teenager. And when we used to, we used to run out of stair treads and we'd cut our own. So, I mean, no big deal. It's kind of a pain because you can only cut so far and then you got to get into the joints with a handsaw. But it's 4th of July, like I said, so I am dead in the water for today because no lumber. And honestly, I was going to reuse these two pieces, the header and the footer piece there for the stairs. What they did is they assembled them. Um, they screwed the stringers to these pieces and then just put them in place and screwed them in place. And that's kind of a, that's kind of a, janky hack move there that was in two that should have been one piece i mean you never notice it because the joint the stair was right on it but you know i, I so and they're they're not they're okay they're serviceable they're good and solid but i'll get new use the excuse i'll get new new wood and i'll do both two by eights and i'll make that one piece so the lumber yard tomorrow on the fifth to buy some two by twelves to custom cut up my own stringers assemble them and then yeah hopefully so oh, i gotta put something over that so no one walks through there anyway happy fourth of july this project is never gonna end <sighs> all right so it's july 5th here's the carnage from stair stringer production so let me just tell you about my day like you care so i went to the dentist so half my mouth is numb so if i sound like a drooling, blithering idiot, it's because I am. Anyway, so, went to the hardware store, returned the pre-cut stair stringers, bought a two by 12, fabbed up my own. Thankfully, I had just enough pieces, parts left to act as a template so that I was able to figure it out. And then I figured out what they did. They built this as a box, put it all together, then put it in place and screwed to the four by fours, screwed to the ledger board there and I will add the decking pieces there. I will show you when I'm done. So let's see, in addition to being a blithering idiot, let's see, can we hear? Oh yeah, I drilled a hole into the, my finger, my guitar playing hand of course, cut nice gash right there in the webbing. He was a huge sliver that cut me there. Let's see, what else? Oh, Trex does not like to be cut with a hole saw. 
I had to cut back there for the extension cord, more on that later, but if you can see, it really <laughs> kind of burned more than it cut. I got through it, but it smoked, and I thought I was going to start a fire there. Okay, what's next? Screws. I did use regular exterior grade screws with a big head on it to put this together because the Trek screws are not they have that small head. They're not really structural in my opinion. So I did use the good screws there. Okay, next. Oh, yes, this. My son ran over ex two extension cords at the joint and cut them both with the lawnmower. Hey, at least he was mowing the lawn. So, yeah, I've had this joint, you know, right here on the edge. It runs power out to the other garage. I had it right there. It's been nice and tamped down, but what happened was when I got the lumber delivered, the guy, he didn't need to, he unplugged it. He didn't want to drive over it, and it's like, you could have driven over it as long as your wheels weren't on the joint. But he unplugged it, plugged it back in, it sat up proud. Anyway, yeah, got mowed. So, that means I have another project for today. Got the wife to pick these up at the local hardware store. It's not ideal, but it will work, and it doesn't cost me, you know, $100 for two new extension cords. So yeah, anything else? No, let's uh, let's get this decking on here and just be done with this. All right, cool. All right, my friend. So we can check out the custom made stringers we saw before. Now replete with Trex decking steps. I, you know, if I had to do again, I might even cut a fourth stringer just for the Trex because it's not super structural feels okay for now. I guess if I have to, I'll add some supports in there. I can't imagine taking it apart to uh, add another custom cut stringer. But now the entire reason for this grilling porch is to grill. And I will insert... Oh, somebody's still celebrating the 4th of July, late on the 5th. That's a firearm here in the distance. Anyway, I will insert a uh, picture, a couple of pictures here of a rodent who thought it was going to take up residence in the corner of my grill since it was off all the way off the porch there onto the lawn for two weeks. Um, so yeah, this will wrap up my two weekend project. Cheeseburgers, shop favorite, Brady Clark's favorite, also one of my best friend's favorite. So of course we have many different cheeses here. Cheddar, cheddar for me. American, which I don't believe is fit for human consumption, but some people prefer it. Reminiscent of their good old days, I guess. Pepper Jack, cheese, more American, ugh. So anyway, thank you for uh, bearing with me in this long and drawn out process here. Please uh, click subscribe, give me a like, um, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you think about the uh, upgrade to the grilling porch here and my uh, specialty here, cheeseburgers. All right, my friends. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.